Hello and welcome to the Monday, April 1st, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. For the reverse engineers among you, Remco published another installment about Golang. In this episode, Remco is going over some ideas how to annotate reversed Golang libraries using the Radari 2 frontend cutter and Jupyter. And if you're trying to set up some bulk detection for MAC addresses affected by the ACES malware that made big news last week, they're now available for download. If you remember, the malware only became active if it was run on a system that used a network card with one of about 600 different hard-coded MAC addresses. It is assumed that these systems are high-value systems targeted by this particular attack. Now, Asus released an offline scanner, but uh, this one really only contained hashes of the affected addresses. You could install this offline scanner and check your address, but just sort of brute forcing MAC address using this offline scanner, well, uh, that would have been way too slow. So Skylight Cyper took a look at the hashing algorithm used by this offline scanner, which actually wasn't terribly bad. It was 10,000 rounds of uh, salted SHA-256, but then again, it was just one salt. And uh, with MAC addresses, the space is uh, large, but not that huge. So they were able to actually brute force 583 of the MAC addresses using a reasonably massive uh, AWS system with eight NVIDIA Tesla GPUs and 16 gigabytes of RAM. And to save yourself the work and money they made available, the 583 MAC addresses that they were able to brute force so far. And remember the pwned to owned contest I talked about a couple of weeks ago as part of this contest, there were a number of survey vulnerabilities that were found in all tested browsers, also in some virtualization software. VMware now released an update for its desktop virtualization products fixing some of the problems exposed during the contest. The worst of the vulnerabilities allow an attacker to run code on the host, which of course could potentially be a threat for security analysts running malicious code in virtual machines. The patches released affect VMware ESXi workstation, both pro and player, as well as the macOS product uh, VMware Fusion. Additional updates are available also for VMware the cloud director. I don't think those particular updates were related to pwn to own One feature of the attack on a mosque in New Zealand was a manifesto that the attacker attempted to promote with the attack. Now, media have been trying not to further the attacker's cause and not widely distribute the document. Uh, this, of course, does not prevent people from just uh, searching for it and a group that considers itself a vigilante operation targeting possible followers of the attacker has now released a fake document that claims to be the manifesto, but instead installs a piece of malware that will then erase your hard drive by overriding the master boot record. This weaponized version of the document uses good old word macros to download an executable, so if you're running into a system that all of a sudden has an overwritten master boot record, uh, this may be the cause of it. And then we got a new vulnerability in Kubernetes that's probably worthwhile to talk about in particular, since I think there is a lot more attention being focused on these type of vulnerabilities over the last year or so. This latest vulnerability is in the Kubernetes copy command that allows you to copy files from a container 
to the user's workstation. Now, usually the risk of this operation is fairly low, but if you downloaded a container from an untrusted source or if an attacker was able to manipulate files within a container and then tricks the user into copying these files to a workstation, this would open up the user to overriding arbitrary files on the workstation, which I guess then sort of amounts to privilege escalation. Escalation. Another tricky part here is that this vulnerability was fixed a year ago, but apparently wasn't fixed completely. And this new announcement released now does show a little bypass of the patch that was released last year. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.